Hey, Toto, we're not in high school anymore. Hello, welcome back everybody. I am here with my cute and crusty self out on my patio for a change of scenery finally. I know it's really special because I don't like to change. You're welcome. As you know, it is Porva back at it again with a fantastic video so that you can struggle a little less than I have so far in life. If you are new, welcome. It is great to see you. And if you are not, welcome back, I guess. As long as you've seen a few of my other videos. P.S. If you haven't, go check them out because Drum roll, please. We have hit 100 subscribers. Thank you so much to those who have subscribed, and this is a great milestone to start off with our cute little family. Uh, don't mind the random noises in the background, because like I said, I'm outdoors. My neighbors are staring at me, but that's fine, because I have nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> like I said, if you would like to see new content from me every week, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button if you enjoyed that content, the notification bell so you will be notified every time I upload, and you can join our humble little YouTube family. Grab some, feel free to grab some coffee, tea, snacks, whatever you want. Join me and we can chat a little bit about the most random stuff in life. Because I have a great time hanging out with you and I hope you have the same feeling about me. So let us get started, study bugs. So when you first get into college, you may or may not already have a lot of experience with classes like PSEO, AP classes, IB classes. I was one of those freshmen as well. The thing you shouldn't do though is go around saying you have a sophomore standing because a lot of people have a sophomore standing and I mean, it's just like something you hear a lot. Like I'm not trying to be like shady or anything, but if you avoid saying that, that would probably be for the best. We're all just here to graduate, right? Um, however, I'd, so I was at that point during my freshman year as well, but I quickly realized that high school classes are not the same as college classes. In college, you have fewer classes that teach you more in depth over the entire semester. Therefore, a lot of the homework is a lot harder than you would think, and there's a lot more of it. Um, and tests are a bigger part of your grade. Uh, therefore, you may or may not need to change the study habits that you formed during high school. And if you didn't have any study habits because you needed, didn't need them in high school, I guarantee you, you will need them now. You may initially think that you can get by without studying or doing homework if you did that in high school, but I am here to tell you that's not the same thing in college. So let's divide this video into a few separate parts, starting with general college supplies. And why I say this is there are two main ways that you can take notes in college. And I would say that maybe like 50-50 or a similar sort of split of people use these two methods, the first of which is the iPad and Apple Pen. Essentially, you get an app, the most popular one being Notability, and you have a little section for every class and lecture, and you obviously just take notes on there. This is great for people that lose things or want to keep everything slim and environmentally friendly if they can. If you have a notebook, or sorry, if you have a binder and you have an iPad, that's like the two things you need because the binder would only be for any handouts that you'll get during your discussion sections, and the iPad would be for everything else. The pros, of course, is that this saves you a lot of space in your backpack, especially if you're someone who likes to have physical textbooks, because those can get super heavy. I myself prefer online textbooks, but some people like to have stuff in front of them to read plain. But if the only reason that you're not going to use the iPad is because you dislike the texture of writing on glass, there are cute little glass screen protectors that feel like you're writing on paper to help kind of with that sensory effect. It's like a little extra that might help you feel better about taking notes. The second option is of course paper and pencil. A lot of you have probably used this all throughout your life during high school and it is a very reliable way of taking notes, I'm sure. I personally like to have a five subject notebook and a binder with me in my backpack at all times. Typically I'm taking five classes or less so five subjects is perfect and most kids will take around five classes or less in college as well per semester. Uh, the binder is to hold stuff like loose leaf worksheets that you get in your discussion, like I mentioned before in the iPad section. But I like to 
combine this with my touchscreen laptop. I guess this is kind of going off more on more of a tangent. I have the HP Spectre 360, which has a touchscreen and it comes with a little pen that you can write on the screen with. And I like to use a Microsoft OneNote for that, but a lot of people may prefer doing one or the other. I'll probably make a recommendation list for laptops when I was doing research as well, so keep an eye out for that. Usually for classes such as chemistry or math where there are equations and diagrams that you really have to uh, be able to draw out detailed, I like to use my pen and paper for because it's not the easiest time writing on a laptop, but for quick notes in English such as for like English classes or sociology classes or psychology classes, uh, I like to have my computer to type out the notes in paragraph indentation format because it's a lot easier during lecture when the professor is saying main points that you want to have starred but you also want to follow along and make sure you're not missing anything. Um, I like to have that for like rough notes so that when I go back I can read all of those quick notes and make more detailed mind maps out of them. Then after each semester I tear out all of the pages that I have uh, in my notebook and I take all of the worksheets that I have in my binder, uh, group them together, three hole punch them, and then put them in a kind of a comprehensive binder that I separate by uh, tabs so that I know exactly when I took that class and what notes I took for them. And I like this because that means I don't have to buy a new notebook every semester and I'm using all the pages and it feels a little more environmentally friendly for me. Uh, fun fact, since I am left-handed, maybe some of you are as well, I prefer to use erasable pens. These pens have really quick drying ink, so it, you never get those smears on the paper or like on the back of your hand like you would with a pencil or a pen. And it helps me have super neat handwriting. Um, they, in the long run, I feel like would be about the same cost as a pencil would be. Maybe a little more, but... Oh my god, it's so hot out here. I apologize if I'm like rapidly deteriorating on screen as we speak. I'm like an ice cream cone. I really can't be out here that long. Just a side note, the ink in these pens uh, does erase with heat. That's why they're called like friction pens because the friction, uh, the heat of the friction is what erases the paper. So if you were to leave them outside in a hot sunny place, your notes will probably disappear. I personally have never had this problem, but if that ever happens to you, don't panic. Put them in the freezer. And the only con with this is all of the stuff that you erased other than your notes will probably come back as well. So be prepared. Some extra materials that you're going to need includes like paper clips and staples. I like to have like a little mini stapler for the essays that I'm going to write uh, if I have any classes that I need essays for. Surprisingly, I've only written two essays in college so far. Go figure. Some other things, probably like some highlighter markers or index cards for physical flashcards if you really hate Quizlet. Yeah, maybe there's some old souls. Maybe you hate the internet. Go, like, it, you do you. So now that we've dealt with what to use to take notes and organize them, let's move on to study habits or like ways of taking notes. There are many different ways that you can do this. You might already have a way that you're comfortable with, but I will, I'm here to tell you that there might be a more efficient way to do that. So of course, the least effective way is just regurgitating information out onto the paper. What I mean by this is you go to the lecture and you write down every single thing the professor says without actually thinking about it. If you find that you don't want to miss any information while you're in lecture, you can do like a voice recording, a video recording with the professor's uh, permission. You can probably even find some recordings online if the professor likes to do that as well. Uh, the main thing that I'm trying to tell you is you don't need to write down every single thing the professor says. You just need to listen for some key concepts and jot them down as a quick note. You're there more to understand and ask questions rather than just have kind of a a transcript of everything that your professor says so you can actually retain it later. And the great part is if you take super quick notes and you understand what you're doing while you're in class, when you go back to study it later, you'll kind of have like a twice, a, a twice, you kind of have read all of the information twice and repetition is obviously key when you're doing anything and this will help you remember it much better. Life hack for kids who have online classes this fall semester. Uh, you probably hopefully already know this, but if you put your videos on two times speed, you can still understand them and take really quick notes and it'll cut down on 
like the, all of the time that you have to watch the videos by half so you have more time to actually study them. If you enjoy rapid note taking, use the Morse code method. This is typically best reserved for textbooks. This is where you put like little dots and dashes on main points and supporting points. You really quickly write down all of this and if you're listening to a lecture you can do the dots the same way. You just put dots down for main points and dashes for lecture and you just write down whatever you hear really quickly and you review it every second like of space that you have. Essentially this helps you paraphrase all of the uh, topics in your own words which will help you later create a better organized train of thought and essentially help you repeat that study method. If you like learning through images or you're a little more creative you can use a mind map. Now, in my opinion, a mind map is probably best left for after lecture because they'll take a little bit of time to trace your thoughts out, but they can be really helpful in finding out the concepts within a main idea. Think of it kind of like a tree where you have your main topic as the trunk and the branches that go off are subtopics, and then once you get to the subtopics, you can put little question marks by things you don't understand or things you need to look up videos for and the little leaves can be like details that you don't want to forget. If you do the best with complete written out thought, I would try the, the sentence method. This is where you take every paragraph or topic in lect lecture, write out a complete sentence for the main topic and underneath that write out subtopics in complete sentences and details in complete sentences. Technically, this is kind of the way that I like to take quick notes while I'm typing them out in class because I will take the main topic and put it on top, then do kind of an indent and then do subtopics underneath that. It gives you kind of like a flow this way for each topic and I really enjoy it because I can go back and star and highlight and um, like notice little definitions in my notes if I'd like to. Other common note-taking methods include outlining, charting, and everyone's favorite, Cornell. You can look these up online if you really want to find more ways to take notes that I never listed here before, uh, that I haven't listed in this video. Well, hopefully after you've taken all these notes and you haven't dropped out yet, you are ready for your first few midterms. Uh, midterm season's kinda hell, libraries will be packed, but if you study correctly, you shouldn't have to spend a bunch of hours or pull any all-nighters. I did not pull any all-nighters my entire year because I feel that they are super detrimental to your health and do more harm than good in the long term. Ideally you've been reviewing every day for like at least maybe two weeks before the midterm but I know you're gonna end up probably cramming all of the information in maybe like half a week before the test or if you're really adventurous a few hours before the test. So when you study, obviously you're trying to find as many practice problems as you can that may be on the test and go through them so that if you find something similar you'll be able to solve it. One of the best ways to know exactly what's going to be on the test is to take practice midterms from like a semester or two before. I'll get more on that later, but those are honestly the ideal way to um, study last minute if you have to. First off, cramming all the information into your brain without any other breaks is the best way to burn yourself out and retain close to nothing. So for study timing, try the Pomodoro method. Essentially what this is, you set a timer for 25 minutes and you study for those 25 minutes. Now after that chunk is over, you take a 5 minute break to get up, stretch, get water, look through your phone, whatever you want. Then you go back to studying for 25 more minutes. So you take these 25 minute study blocks and those five minute study blocks repeat it four times and on the fourth study period the break should be around like 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, this is scientifically proven to be one of the best ways to study because it helps you retain the information, kind of digest it a little, and not burn yourself out when you're trying to take really long study hours. It really helps with mental fatigue and making sure you don't burn yourself out before the test. Another great way to study is watching fun YouTube videos because we all know that we all get bored of reading our own handwriting or the textbook because words are boring. Infographics and uh, watching other people talk is a lot more interesting. I recommend Khan Academy. The Organic Chemistry Tutor is amazing and has a bunch of topics on his channel and there are tons more out there you just gotta be able to know how to look for reliable information side note have a ton of small snacks with you while you study that take a long time to eat because you'll avoid getting up and going to the fridge or pantry when you're bored and it'll be fuel for your hard-working brain hard-working or hardly working brain am I right
especially if you're cramming the night before. Please don't. I say this like I'm not guilty of doing the same thing. As I mentioned, try to do as many practice exams as you can. Sometimes your professor, if you're lucky, will provide all of these from the past few years or semesters. Otherwise, you're gonna have to ask people that have already taken the class if you can see their old exams. In college, it's a little bit different than high school. They will give you your exams back after they are graded and they become great study resources for people taking the class in the future. If you don't know that many older people on campus, a great hack is to go to one-on-one -on -one or group tutoring. One-on-one uh, -on -one tutoring is more likely to help, but it's only available for some people on some campuses, so if you have that resource, it is amazing. You can spend time talking to them about all of the concepts that you don't know, and they'll most likely also give you a lot of their old notes, flashcards, study methods, uh, YouTube videos, and maybe even practice exams that help them prepare for the test. Office hours are a given, and you've probably heard about them everywhere. Honestly, a lot of people don't go to them. That's why they're so great, because their offices are empty, and they're just waiting for someone to come talk to them, uh, maybe even ask for life advice, but mainly to ask questions about the class, and because they're there to help you succeed. However, if you're feeling a little intimidated because it's your first year on campus, Pure Tutors are the way to go. All right, I hope you've come out of this video with a little more understanding of how studying in college works, and you are way less stressed about how that's going to go in the fall. Hopefully, you now know how to succeed academically in college. And if no one has told you yet, or if you haven't watched any of my other videos, your mental health is way more important than any grade that you could get in college. I struggle with this anxiety myself, and my mother always tells me that what's the worst that could happen? What, you have to fail that class? You have to retake it? Like, there's nothing more important than your own life, and if it's saving your mental health to maybe neglect one class in favor of another, I would say go for it. Anyways, that is it for this class, folks. I mean video. <laughs> I felt kind of like I was lecturing, but that is it for this video. I hope you are having a wonderful day, and if you're not, I'm transferring the most powerful vibes your way. See you next time.